because the the news agency said they were like, no, is it true that these were Dotsons? It was a dog pack of Dotsons, wild Dotsons in America. And it killed, they killed a woman. So yeah, imagine that. I think in all seriousness, I could probably take on maybe like three or 400 Dotsons and uh, I would probably survive. So, um, because I mean, I would just, I could just punt them. But I will do this. We will talk about Sergeant Stubby. Have you heard about Sergeant Stubby before? He's pictured on the thumbnail. He's in the top left. Sergeant Stubby, a mixed breed dog with a stubby tail, probably a bull terrier, started out as a stray who hung around a group of soldiers while they were training in New Haven, Connecticut. He eventually became the most famous canine hero of WW1. He served in 17 battles in France alongside his best friend, Private J. Robert Conroy, and the 102nd Infantry, 26th Yankee Division. The fearless pup performed a number of vital roles, including alerting troops to incoming gas attacks, catching German spies, locating missing soldiers in between the trenches, and boosting morale. At the war's end, the brave dog received a medal from General John J. Pershing, commander of the American forces in Europe, who saluted the dog's, quote, heroism of highest caliber, close quote, and, quote, bravery under fire. The famous hero dog led parades, met three presidents, and became the mascot of Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Stubby's tough facade belied an inner strength and loyalty that are worthy of celebration. Well, isn't that a wonderful story? So, this uh, Sergeant Stubby, 17 battles. That dog was with his best friend and the 102nd Infantry. Now, that, that's something we should absolutely remember. He survived the war unscathed. Uh, fortunately, he was on. How could you imagine this? Or at least as far as we know, as far as what I've had to read about him. I read this and I, another piece about him, and this was the one that was, uh, was I thought was best written. Didn't say anything about, uh, it is a lovely story, well, well, well said, Roy. Uh, didn't say anything about the, the lovely pup being injured, but he's a cute little guy, as you can see. He's got a little vest on him with medals on it, and it, uh, only white people, only white people. We love it, don't we? The Dotson story, Rose and Bros helped me out there. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, crazy story. I guess it's try I'm trying to push it out of my mind because it's so crazy. It's it's a bit macabre, uh, but we are talking about. <laughs> well, I know. I guess it's going the other direction, but the dogs being loyal and wonderful. There was a morbidly obese woman, and I know this is hard to believe in the United States. There was a morbidly obese woman, and uh, she was uh, killed. She was killed. So it's a terrible thing that she was killed. That's not funny. This was years ago, though. And uh, she was killed by Dotsons. <laughs> not kidding. <laughs> not kidding. I think it, were, I think it was like maybe... Uh, they, I think they captured and, and euthanized... Uh, they, they actually referred to it as a pack of Dotsons. And they, they captured the pack. I, there might have been nine or I don't know how many. Something like that. And they euthanized them. And they, the video, the, the interview of the, the, the vets that had to, working for the county, that had to put down these little Dotsons, I mean, you know, Dotsons, uh, she had to confirm because the, the news agency said, they were like, now, are, is it true that these were Dotsons? It was a dog pack of Dotsons, wild Dotsons in America. And it killed, they killed a woman. And she she yes, they were Dotsons. I think in all seriousness, I could probably take on maybe like three or four hundred Dotsons. 
and uh, I would probably survive. So, um, because I mean, I would just I could just punt them. I could just drop kick them, a bunch of wild Dotsons, and it would just have to be pure fatigue. You know, I mean, maybe like 500 Dotsons would be able to finally defeat No White Guild. Maybe <laughs> hell of a battle all the way to the end. It would be Dotsons hanging off of my arms and and neck and torso and legs, and I would still be kicking them and chucking them and biting them back. It's a true story. Um, but there was a dragonfly over there as well. I know there's several types of dragonflies. I'm trying to remember the name of, of that one. But instead of talking about that dragonfly, I'll just kick the table over by accident. Uh, instead of talking about the dragonfly, I will now talk about Smokey. Uh, a beautiful, just adorable little Yorkshire Terrier. Smokey, a four-pound Yorkshire Terrier, proves that war dogs come in all shapes and sizes. Found in the New Guinea jungle. Now, this is a bit I have to just pipe in here with. I, the, the, a Yorkshire Terrier found in the jungle of New Guinea? I think unlikely. I mean, I, I don't deny that he was found in the jungle, but th this, this was not an animal living in the jungle. He had escaped someone's ownership during the wartime, and he was now in the jungle. So found in the New Guinea jungle by an American soldier during WW2. Smokey was later sold to another soldier, Corporal William A. Wynn from Cleveland, Ohio. Wynn and Smokey stayed together for the next two years of the war. And the little dog survived the heat, limited food rations, typhoons, air raids, combat missions, and even a 30-foot parachute jump. She had her own special parachute. Wynn credits his dog with saving his life by guiding him away from incoming fire on a transport ship. Smokey is also now recognized as the first therapy dog as she spent many hours both during the war and back home visiting veterans and entertaining them with the varied collection of tricks that Wynn taught her. After the war, Smokey and Wynn made numerous TV appearances together, performing tricks and telling their amazing story. Smokey lived in Cleveland with Wynn and his family until her death in 1957 at age 14. On Veterans Day in 2005, a memorial for Smokey was unveiled in the Rocky Reservation of the Cleveland Metro Parks in Lake in Lakewood, Ohio. The statue features the tiny dog sitting inside a combat helmet, smiling her trademark smile. So the statue was actually made from a photograph of the little dog in an American serviceman's uh, combat helmet, cute as can be. And uh, you can find that statue online and find out more about little Smokey and, uh, of course, all, the, all three dogs that we'll be talking about today, Sergeant Stubby, Smokey, and uh, in a moment, we'll be talking about Nemo, finally a dog that's a little bigger, associated with more with combat, a German Shepherd, a wonderful beast, a German Shepherd. And uh, there goes, I think that was a Red Admiral, another type of butterfly in this area, the Red Admiral. Flying by, we'll see. We'll keep the the state butterfly is a tiger swallowtail, so it would be really lucky if we could have a tiger swallowtail fly by, maybe land on my shoulder, just for the purpose. Hint, hint to nature. Hint, hint. <laughs> bring in, bring in something lovely. Uh, but yeah, Dotsons killed by Dotsons. You normally hear uh, different types of breeds taking people, humans down. Very rarely. Very rarely, the little and loving, those faces on Dotsons, oh my gosh. They look up at you with that, those beautiful big eyes of theirs, beautiful big brown eyes, and they've got that perfect little body to just tunnel in beside you. Yeah, wonderful animals. Jim says, what the hell, man? Rabid? No, they weren't rabid. 
they weren't rabid. But uh, if if three or four hundred rabid ones attacked me, I I still would be able to. I think it would have to take five hundred. I think it would be five hundred uh, that would have to that would be able to pull me down. Four fifty, four ninety nine. That wouldn't be enough. It would be the one that made the number five hundred. That would finally, I would be too fatigued to fight on, and I would cave. <laughs> But uh, let's get to our final story today. On Memorial Day 2001, remembering not only uh, and saluting not only our brothers and sisters of Western kind, uh, but also our uh, canine companions, man's best friend. And now we're going to talk about Nemo. In 1966, a German shepherd dog named Nemo and his handler... Airman second class Robert Thornburg both survived gunshot wounds while fighting in Vietnam. A bullet hit Nemo in the muzzle, but the brave dog stayed strong and charged four gunmen, giving Thornburg, who was shot in the shoulder, enough time to call for reinforcements. Thornburg and Nemo both survived, but Nemo's right eye had to be removed. Nemo was sent back to Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, where he had been trained to recover under the care of the base's veterinarians. Nemo lived out the rest of his life in Lackland in his own special kennel and served as an inspiration for countless handlers in training. Sadly, Nemo was one of only 200 of the 4,000 dogs who served in the Vietnam War that returned home after the war ended. Some of the surviving dogs who did not return were euthanized or left in Vietnam, despite the protests of their handlers. The handlers and other veterans continued to fight for the rights of war dogs pushing for legislation to create a program for their adoption. President Clinton signed that legislation into law in 2000, ensuring the dogs now serving in the U.S. military will have a home when they have finished their battlefield jobs. What a great story that is of Nemo, the German Shepherd, an absolutely gorgeous animal here, and uh, Century Dog Nemo, A534, it says on the sign behind him, for December 1966, Century Dog Nemo. Engage the enemy during an attack, and then the dog is in front of the rest of the sign there. But uh, marvelous, marvelous animal. What a great story that is. The dog actually shot in the face, shot in the face, and it charged the uh, North Viet Cong, four of them, to attack them, even though the dog was shot in the face so that his master could make a call for reinforcements, a master who was also shot and wounded by the North Viet Cong. Uh, What a great champion. And we remember Nemo today uh, on this Memorial Day for his service uh, to uh, us and our people in that combat role in that capacity. And, of course, as a loving companion and inspiration for many years afterward, even though he was one eye short of the ones he was born with. Uh, So what a great story. Yeah, yes, indeed, Brad. Uh, Hail Nemo, uh, Sergeant uh, Stubby, and our beautiful little Smokey, the Yorkshire Terrier. (sighs) Dotson Apocalypse. (laughs) How does she die? Oh my God, my, oh, when I received that story and I had to look into it, I thought this is, can't be true. I was laughing the entire time. No way that you could be killed by Dots. <laughs> First of all, no way there could be a wild pack of them in America or anywhere. How could they live? Um, but apparently they did. Uh, <laughs> do you imagine? <laughs> Uh, getting taken down. I guess she tripped. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, but <laughs> trying to run away. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know. But it just shows that the the canine heart is is as ferocious as a T-Rex, even when it's in a little body. 